Mr. Chairman, when Congress passed the authorization for the use of military force just days after 9-11, it provided the President with the broad authority to strike against those who planned, authorized, committed, or aided the terrorist attacks that occurred on September 11, 2001, or harbored them. That authorization no longer properly encompasses the scope of military action that we are taking in the ongoing fight against terrorism. While the AUMF was originally directed at a fairly narrow range of actors, it has been used to sanction targeted strikes against groups and militants with little relation to the individuals who actually planned, authorized, and perpetrated the attacks on 9-11. Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution invests Congress with the power to declare war. It is our most awesome responsibility, and it is central to the success of our military efforts overseas. We owe it to the men and women we send into combat to properly define and authorize their mission. This amendment would not immediately repeal the 2001 AOMF. Instead, it would sunset one year from the date of enactment, providing time for the administration to consider what authorities are needed to protect the nation. And I think a more narrow authorization, constrained in focus and duration, may very well be necessary. But let's be clear, even in the absence of an AUMF, the administration would retain the necessary authority to respond to threats from al-Qaeda. At a hearing in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee this morning, uh, Stephen Preston, General Counsel for the Department of Defense, testified, the AMF is not the only authority the President has to use force to keep us safe. The President has authority under the Constitution to use military force as needed to defend the nation against armed attacks and imminent threat of armed attack. Over the course of the last year, there has been a growing recognition of the outdated nature of the current AOMF. In Syria, for example, one of the most violent groups on the ground is the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, ISIL, which grew out of al-Qaeda in Iraq. Though originally part of the al-Qaeda brand, ISIL has since been excommunicated from al-Qaeda, and recent months have seen intense fighting between ISIL and the Nusra Front, al-Qaeda's preferred jihadi group. That raises the question of whether action against ISIL would be covered by the current AOMF. And if it's not, do we really want to be in a situation where Ayman al-Zawahiri is able to choose which groups are subject to the authorization for the use of force by the United States and which are not? That is not something I think we want to delegate to our enemies. Last year, during consideration of the Defense Appropriations Bill, I offered a similar amendment that gained the bipartisan support of 185 members of the House, indicating strong support on both sides of the aisle for bringing our actions into conformity with the law. Since then, the legally precarious nature of our military actions under the AOMF has only become more pronounced. This amendment requires Congress and the administration to do something about it. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Claim the time in opposition. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Madam Chair, I yield myself three minutes. The gentleman is recognized for three minutes. Madam Chair, as the gentleman indicates, he offered this amendment last year and it failed, and I believe it should fail again. As the gentleman knows, I believe very strongly that the AUMF should be updated. In fact, this House has voted twice to update it, but then the Senate failed to take any action whatsoever. And I don't think there's any reason to believe that there is any more likely prospect of the Senate acting now than before. So what this amendment would do, it would be to repeal the AUMF against terrorists without anything, anything at all, to replace it. And, frankly, without any prospect of having anything to replace it, at least in, in this Congress. And so we would be left without, with no authority to take action against terrorists bent on killing Americans. And I can't help but note, Madam Chair, that they just opened the 9-11 Museum in New York in the last few days. Have we forgotten so quickly about what this AUMF is all about? One other factor, the President has made some comments about engaging Congress on this issue. But he has exercised absolutely no leadership whatsoever in doing so. What does the President propose if he proposes an update to the AUMF? We have no idea. Unfortunately, that lack of leadership 
is all too common for this administration. Meanwhile, what's happening in the world? Well, terrorism is growing and it's getting more dangerous. I note there was a New York Times story just where the new director of the FBI says that before he was sworn in and got access to the latest information, he underestimated the terrorist threat. Quote, I didn't have anywhere near the appreciation I got after I came into this job how virul virulent those affiliates had become, Mr. Comey said. There are many more than I appreciated, and they are stronger than I appreciated. And yet the Obama administration, Madam Chairman, wants us to believe that terrorism is done, uh, we've got them on the run, everybody's going to live happily ever after. And, but that sort of wishful thinking is not only unrealistic, it's dangerous. As a matter of fact, the Richard Haas, the president of the Council on Foreign Relations, has written within the last month that American foreign policy is in troubling disarray. David Brooks wrote in the New York Times, all around the fabric of peace and order is fraying. And I would suggest that a substantial part of that disarray and fraying is this sort of wishful thinking that we can wish terrorism and other problems away and go along and, and the world is not going to bother us. In other words, short-term political messaging is taking precedence over longer-term strategic interests. So repealing the current authority that helps the military protect us against terrorism without something to take its place is exactly that kind of wishful thinking. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from California is recognized. I uh, thank you, and I'm uh, pleased to yield one minute to the gentlewoman from California, Barbara Lee. The gentlewoman from California is recognized for one minute. Thank you. And let me just uh, thank Congressman uh, Schiff for uh, offering this amendment. Uh, as this body knows, I've been offering an amendment to repeal the authorization to use military force for many, many years. Congressman Schiff, this is such an important, a very important amendment, which is critical to stopping this endless war. Unfortunately, the Rules Committee refused to allow my bipartisan amendment taken from my bill, the War Authorization Review and Determination Act, to even be considered. For those who were not here on that sorrowful day just uh, three days after 9-11, let me just read from that short sentence. One sentence, mind you, that passed the House with just one hour of debate with 420 eyes and one no. The President is authorized to use all necessary and appropriate force against those nations, organizations, or persons he determines planned, authorized, committed, or aided the terrorist attacks that occurred on September 11, 2001. I voted against this resolution. Of course it was the most difficult vote of my career. But I knew then what I know now. It was too broad and it is open-ended. Unfortunately, the Republican leadership has allowed a mere, what is it, 10 minutes now to debate this serious and dangerous authorization. Supporting this amendment would be an important step to ensuring that, co that the President does not have, may I have an additional 30 seconds? His time has expired. I, I read I don't have Congress a must exercise its constitutional authority. Thank you very much, Mr. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from California has one minute remaining. The gentleman from Texas has two minutes remaining. Madam Chair, I'd reserve the balance of the time to close. The gentleman from California is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I want to respond to a couple of the points that have been made in opposition. The first, that if the sunset goes into effect and nothing is enacted subsequently, there will be no authority to take action against our enemies. That ignores the President's authority under Article 2, or it is a very, very constrained view of the President's authority under Article 2 as Commander-in-Chief, one not shared by this President, one certainly not shared by President Bush, and indeed one not shared by any President, I think, in U.S. history. This is not an effort to legislate the threats that we face. That cannot be done. But it is an effort to compel Congress and the Administration to bring our use of force into conformity with the laws passed by Congress and to restore our responsibility as the body with the power to declare war and to define the scope of any conflict. Without a sunset, I am convinced that a year from now, we will be exactly where we are today, continuing to rely on an increasingly legally unreliable AUMF. And I have confidence that spurred on by the necessity of acting, and we're not requiring that we act tomorrow, uh, we give a deadline of a year from enactment. That should not be too much to ask of this Congress. Congress will step up to its responsibility.
The gentleman's time has expired. The, the gentleman from Texas is Madam recognized. Chair, I yield myself the balance of the time. The gentleman's recognized for two minutes. Madam Chair, the gentleman argues that, oh, we don't really need these authorities, that there are other authorities. Well, either they're important or they're not. Either Article 1, Section 1 makes a difference in what the president can do to defend the country, or it's all superfluous, and I don't know why we continue to have these debates and declare war. Obviously, there are different views about how far a president's power under Article 2 goes. But most people believe Article 1, Section 8 means something, and that for the Congress to authorize the use of military force means something. And I would say, parenthetically, the last thing we need is to get all balled up in court arguing about this after we have repealed the AUMF but have nothing to take its place. Secondly, the gentleman argues that, well, we're not going to do anything unless we make a deadline. I hate to remind us all, but we've had deadlines before that we have not exactly uh, uh, met. Uh, and, and unfortunately, re repealing something this serious without something to take its place is a dangerous game, I think, to play. The evolution of al-Qaeda is a very serious issue, Madam Chair. We should be having a conversation about how to update the authorization of the, of the use of military force. But we still have to protect the country while we're having that discussion. And unfortunately, this puts the cart before the horse deciding to repeal before we know what will be used to replace it. This amendment is not about Afghanistan, Yemen, Mali, uh, Somalia, or anywhere else. This amendment's about us. This is about protecting Americans and whether the president and the military have the authority that the Constitution allows us to give them to protect the country. We should not abandon that lightly. The world is still dangerous. The terrorists are still coming for us. We need to keep this in place unless and until there is a more updated AUMF to replace it. I oppose the amendment and yield back the time. The gentleman yields back. The question is on the amendment offered by the gentleman from California. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. In the opinion, Chair, the noes have it. The Madam amendment Chair, is on not that, I request a recorded vote. Pursuant to Clause 6 of Rules 18, further proceedings on the amendment offered by the gentleman from California will be postponed.